Welcome everyone to today's Cosmox webinar series presentation, uh, Canadian law firms go paperless. Presenting today, we have Mayor Gadia, a chartered accountant with 15 years of experience spread between PwC in Canada and US and Fairfax Financial Holding Limited. His experience includes assisting companies with their capital raising activities, uh, divestitures, uh, acquisitions, mergers, financial due diligence, system conversion, cross-border transactions, and financial reporting obligations. During his tenure with PwC and Fairfax, he served as an expert advisor to c executives and board members on accounting and business operation matters. He has worked on Bay Street, Wall Street, and Silicon Valley. Additionally, from Cosmox, we have Erica Burstler, the Director of Strategic Communication at Cosmox. Erica has nearly a decade of experience in the legal software industry, catering to the specialized tech needs, uh, needs of small to mid-sized law firms. She's given numerous presentations across the country on legal technologies, such as law practice technology management, cloud computing, legal billing, and trust accounting compliance. With that, I'm going to pass it over to Erica. Great, thank you so much. Welcome everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to speak on this topic today along with Mayor. So before we get into the topic itself, I wanna take a little time to introduce what we will be covering today. So the first point is why are law firms going paperless? Uh, Mayor will actually talk a bit about why law firms have latched onto papers for so long. I'm sure you can relate to that quite a bit. I mean, everything you do ends up on a piece of paper um, in many ways. So it's been sometimes a challenge to release that, but there's a lot of reasons why law firms are now modernizing uh, and looking at the benefits of having a paperless office. So we will talk about that. The next is those three phases. So if going paperless is appealing to you, and I'm sure it is, considering you're in the session today, then we're going to talk about the three different phases as to basically how to get started and the steps to take to become completely paperless. And the last piece is about leveraging technology. Obviously, if you're thinking of getting rid of paper, technology is a big part of that. There is a large abundance of all different types of legal technology or technology in general that law firms can utilize. So we will talk um, a bit about how the type of technology you choose can dramatically help or hurt your firm in terms of becoming streamlined. Like you don't want to cause complications by being paperless. If anything, you want to make your life a bit easier. So towards the end, um, if you know, based on what time we have remaining, I'll show a little bit about how modern practice management can help you become paperless as a firm. So before we get into the topic itself, I do want to take a quick poll of those in attendance. Very simple question as to is your law firm paperless? So I'm going to launch that poll. There's a few options here. Let me go ahead and launch that. You should see it pop up on your screen. Uh, more so like what degree are you paperless? You might have attempted it in the past, um, perhaps never even thought about it. So just take a moment to respond to that poll. Okay, I think we have most of responses in, about 90% have responded. It's an even split in terms of the lead as to those who have never uh, gone paperless. Uh, about 33% have said they're, you know, you're still working with a lot of paper. Along with that, another 33% said somewhat, implemented a little bit, but you want to make sure you're leveraging that properly. Uh, and some have not le leveraged at all or gone paperless at all. So a good mix, almost 50-50 between never thought of paperless, have not done it, and those have implemented it to some degree. So thank you so much, uh, everybody, for responding to today's poll. I'm going to go ahead and close that and pass it on to Mayor to get started talking about why your law firm may want to go paperless. Excellent. Th thank you so much, Erica. So thank you, everyone, for joining today. It's a, it's, it's a great topic to talk about because uh, we work with a lot of different lawyers and law firms, and this question is always coming up that, you know, what do we do in terms of going to the digitalized world in terms of making sure we're, we're delivering the service in the most optimum manner? So this picture kind of sums it all up. If you think about it, if we were running this webinar 10 years ago, 15 years ago, then we would be looking at the left side of the, of the screen where we say, you have all these papers, you have all these different stationaries to go along with the paper. But then if you look on the right side of the screen, that's really where your client are expecting you to be. So what is what was in the past versus what we are now. So moving along to the next slide, let's kind of look at some of the some of the things that we normally see in a law firm. You know, uh, in terms of why why are law firms going paperless? 
just operationally, what's what's the benefit? Um, first and the most important thing is physical storage on and off premise. For those of you who run law firms, that costs money. No matter how much space it takes, uh, there is that additional space that you that is now costing you money that would have ideally been available to to either sublease it back to the to the tenant or be available for something else within the firm. So clearly there's, there's a cost associated with it. Now people normally tell me, well, I, I don't really have any cost within my office because I send it out externally. Well, that's additional cost as well. So, so the most, and the first and most important thing is there's a cost element, which, which just about every professionals and lawyers love to hear that, how can I save some cost? Second is, you know, the fact that you should consider is wasted of time, looking for paper, retrieving paper documents, means lost billable hours. Also imagine situations, which I'm sure all of you have encountered, where the documents are misfiled. The time it takes to actually track down the document. You do not need these issues arise regularly to appreciate it. Imagine, imagine you're going out to the court. Imagine you have a big case uh, that you need to file for tomorrow morning and you're going around and looking for documents. So point being is you don't need to encounter this all the time, but the fact that the, the productivity loss in just looking for those documents is an additional cost. Now, the other thing that's that's very common is the ability to access these documents from just about everywhere. You know, uh, the modern work life has changed so much. People are looking for flexibility. So the problem is if you've got all these boxes in your office, that means you're not able to access this remotely outside the office. So either you need someone to scan it for you, either you need someone to send it to you. Again, that's all again. That's additional time, that's additional cost. That's probably fr frustration, both on your part, both in the part of the person who's actually doing it. And, and the third and the most important thing that I find uh, in, in just about every interaction we have is adversity to change. You, how many times do people always say, this is how we've always done, why are we changing it? Don't you think that's exactly the problem? Changing behaviors is, is the most important thing uh, that needs to happen as you go paperless. Now, and not, not, just, not just to go paperless, but to eventually get to that stage where you're paperless. So that whole change management piece across the board from start to finish is a, is a pretty critical element in, in my opinion. So let's moving along to the, to the next one. Uh, why, are, why are law firms going paperless? I mean, what's the modern trend? So the so first thing is it's all about experience, client experience. The user experience is the overall experience of the person using the product or the service encompasses of all aspects of interaction with the law firm. So what I mean by that is the expectation that you have as a, as a customer, as a vendor from, from people that you're dealing with, that's the expectation that your clients have dealing with you. So that whole user experience that your clients have from you is a critical element of thinking about technology. The other one is, you know, what people and law firms particularly don't realize is how much you have in terms of so many different options, whether it comes to digital scanning, whether it comes to various cloud-based technology. And Erica, towards the end, can talk a bit about, you know, how Cosmolex as a cloud-based cloud platform can help out. So, so that, that is the other element that people need to think about is the technological option that you need to have. Now, keep in mind, not everything is going to be applicable to you not everything is gonna be useful to you. So, so doing a thorough analysis of what your processes are and what technology can be helpful to achieve those goals or to replace those outdated processes is a critical element of it. The other thing that you want to keep in mind is when you have all these cloud-based technology or when you have all these uh, digital-based environment, which is paperless, that, that helps in centralization of things as well. So for example, you have a Dropbox, for example, you have, uh, you have some kind of a shared drive where people can go in and actually get the documents that they need no matter where they are. So just having that ability to centralize is pretty critical. Now keep in mind, and people ask me this question all the time, you can actually restrict access. So it does not mean that if you put something on a Dropbox as an example or a shared drive as an example, means everybody can access it. That's not true. You can actually restrict access to people who can, can get access and you can even restrict to the level of access they have. For example, you can have restrict, restrict access for them to just download it or just, just read it versus people have access to actually edit the document. So there's a lot of parameters that comes along 
that can actually help out as well. Now, the other one is, is mobile. Again, going back to our remote workplace, you could be accessing documents and information from no matter where you are. That not only gives you, the lawyer, the flexibility, but frankly, your staff as well. The other one is the collaboration. The fact is, when you have everything centralized and in, in a more digitalized environment, it's, it's very easy to collaborate with people, to ask questions. Hey, I saw this. Is this file in the right location? Does it make sense? I need this document to my this filing. Where can I file it? And for example, imagine you're in a court and you need to actually review something and you forgot your documents back in the office or back at home, if that's where you're working from. Then if it's all online, if it's all paperless, you can go back and just quickly access it. So that way you don't have you don't have to tell your client. And frankly, you don't have to be in a position where you need to go back to the office to actually refile something that could have been done very easily. Moving on to the next slide. Again, talk about benefit. We talked about first and the most important thing is, is the client expectation. You don't want to be in a position where this day and age where you have to tell the client, I'm actually out of the office today. I don't have access to that information. How many times do you feel that kind of response doesn't really gel well with the client? If you think it does not, chances are it does not because they're probably scratching their head saying, are you not, are, are you as a law firm, are you, as a lawyer, not up to speed with the time. Uh, why do you have to be in the office if you need to access their document? So that's, a, that's, a, that's an answer you don't wanna give, or frankly, that's an answer you wanna avoid giving if you don't have to, especially if you have things paperless. The other thing is we talked about cost. We talked about timing. So cost is the most important element where you don't have to stack all these papers all around. The second thing is the time. Any, any time that's lost in misfiling, any time that's lost in tracking documents down, that all will start to give benefits. The other thing is uh, the ability to thoroughly search the document. It, you know, I, I, I'm assuming a lot of you guys use these research platforms uh, for legal. We don't, we don't really uh, suggest or recommend any one of them, but there are tons of research platforms out there uh, where you can, you know, go in and research different uh, clauses or different laws or different documents that are applicable to your filing. You could actually do the same thing with your paper documents. If they're all centrally filed, you can actually go and search these documents and look at look at all the all the all, all the related uh, information relating to that particular case. So you can actually search it very easily yourself. The other one that we keep talking about, and and that's really the theme of going paperless, is the ability to access the information no matter where you are, no matter on which platform you are. So not only just just computer, but also tablets, also mobile phones. Uh, so, so that's a, that's something to think about. You could be on the GO train, those of you who are in Toronto, for example, and you could be just working away as if you're in your office. Think about the billable time that you just created in your 30 minute or a one hour commute uh, in GO train, or if you're sitting, waiting for, waiting for, for something to come up uh, in, a, in a coffee shop. Uh, if you've got your laptop on, you can fire it up and start working on it. So that's the other one that that keeps coming up in terms of working remotely client expectation we got about the other point that i want to hit about that i hear so whenever i go to these uh, uh conferences the, the solo conference that i went last year in, in toronto and a couple of other conferences that went across the country uh i get resistance to digital files because i hear that they're not secured and and, and nothing can be far away from truth uh actually most of the service providers that work in the in the cloud-based space the level of security that they have is probably not too different than what your bank has whether it's bank of montreal whether it's td whether it's kosher no matter which bank you're dealing with but the level of security some of these cloud-based platform have is no different than your bank so if you trust to do if you trust your bank to do online banking chances are you can you, you should be able to trust the Dropbox or, or the shared drive or, or one of these cloud-based platform that can help you collaborate. So that's, 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 that's a cliche that could not be far away from the truth when it comes to security. And, and last and the most important thing is go green. I mean, we talk about what is, what is, my, what is my role in, in the carbon footprint. Oh, well, that's your role. If you, if you try to use less paper, you're definitely helping the environment. So, so that's the other thing to keep in mind. Moving along to the next slide. Um, is let's, so we've talked about, so if I go back to how we started this webinar, we talked about the poll where people are, we talked about why there is this trend of going uh, paperless, we talked about the benefits of it, we talked about some of the issues around it, especially around 
security, especially around mindset changes. And now let's talk about how do we do that? So those of you, those 50% uh, who are thinking about it and saying, how, how do we do this? Because this sounds like a lot of work. And, and how do we get there? Or those of you who've already gone there, may be able to relate to some of these things uh, that we're gonna talk about in a second. So look, we, we generally recommend you could do this in three phases, first of all. So proper planning, each of these phases is probably the most critical element of getting to this paperless environment. The first and the most important thing is planning. Sounds, sounds straightforward, but I cannot, I cannot emphasize how important it is. So building a roadmap uh, is probably the most important aspect of going to paperless. Now, how do you build a roadmap? Uh, start small, start small. You don't have to change everything. Something that you hear all the time, uh, Rome was not built in a day, same thing. You, you know, you've been used to paper, your staff has been used to paper, your entire processes, right from intake to invoicing and everything in between has been developed based on paper-based system. You're not gonna be able to change it overnight. So let's do it small. Let's figure out the easy wins in this process. So that gives a lot of, that gives a lot of confidence in yourself to the process, but also to the staff that, hey, look, this makes sense. So first and the most important thing is start small. One process is at a time. That's the most important thing I tell all my clients. We're not gonna get there very quickly. Let's do one process at a time. How do you get to the one process at a time? Take stock of all your processes. Understand all the workflow. Understand what your intake workflow is. Understand how you, you know, whether, you, whether you're an employment law firm, whether you're a personal injury law firm, whether you're a family law firm, uh, whether you're just a security lawyer who just goes out there, gives uh, advice on clients on transaction. Think of each processes that you have right from the time you get engaged by the client, even, even starting the first conversation to sending the engagement letter, all the way up to when you invoice the client when the work's done. Understand each of your processes within that entire spectrum and which of these processes are easy win that can be done easily, quickly, and what, what technology is out there. So building that roadmap, starting one process time, pretty good. Next thing is be realistic. People say, well, you know, Oh, for 10 years, we've been, we've, been, we've been in this environment. Starting tomorrow, I'm gonna to be paperless. It doesn't work that way, at least, at least not in my experience. So be realistic. Be realistic with expectation, but be re realistic with time. So how much time is it gonna take? Going back to the fact that if you've done a good stock of each of your processes, it's a lot easier for you to then build expectations around it and timelines. The other thing is make sure we understand what your client workload is which part of the year you're busy. Certain, certain firms are busy at one time of the year versus the other. Figure out which is your visa period of the year. If everything is busy, that's fantastic. You're doing extremely well, which becomes even more important that you wanna be in this environment. And then, then take a stock of which makes more sense uh, if everything is busy or every time of the year is busy. Again, vacation. So if you have key people managing key processes, make sure you understand what their vacation schedule is. Make sure you understand what your holiday schedules are. Make sure you understand what the month-led clothes are. So most of you on the phone, lawyers or, or people supporting the lawyers, you understand that every month you go to close your books, you have your trust reconciliation that needs to be done within certain time of the, of the following month. You have uh, uh, operating account to be closed and reconciled, your credit cards to be closed and reconciled. So make sure you understand your month -led reporting obligation because unfortunately, unfortunately, they are not an exception. You've got to get that done by that time frame. So make sure you're being realistic with that. The next question is the selection of the software and the equipment. Step one, understand your process. Step two, be realistic. Step three, make sure you understand what the software you need. What equipments do you need? Not, I can almost confidently say, if I were to take the poll of everybody on the call today, uh, chances are not every software out there, not every equipment out there would apply to everybody because your processes may not be the same as you know, a personal injury law firm may have a different process compared to an employment law firm or to a family law firm uh, or a security lawyer. So, so your processes determine or should determine what the software and the equipment you need. So ask the right questions. Ask the right questions of your staff. Ask the right questions of the vendor. So there are lots of awesome vendors out there. Uh, Cosmolux being one of them when it comes to accounting and practice management. Ask them the right question. Ask them, you know, how is it going to make it better? Ask them how it's going to take care of some of the processes and, and, and systems that you have in place. How is that gonna make it better? Now, in a bigger law firm, I always notice that when I talk to managing partners, I talk to people, uh, founders of the law firm, 
they they have a different view of the how the firms running on the back end uh then then if i were to speak to the office manager or to the operational manager or to the bookkeeper or to the accountant so that that one process at the time i think if you're the managing partner who's going to make a decision or she's going to make a decision we need to change this make sure you understand really what the back end processes are uh because chances are your processes are so different than what you actually think and i mean this in a good way because you're so focused on running the business that you don't realize what kind of back end processes have been developed that are actually impeding things for your own growth that you probably don't even realize the next one is you know gather all the documents so i'm not saying take all your boxes and start scanning them in let's do one thing at a time but the point is take a stock of all your inventory and the next one is hey do you want to sell your printers photocopy machine fax machine maybe not let's hold on we're still in phase 1 now i would i can tell you from my personal experience uh i've not used a fax machine for close to 15 years so pretty much my entire working career i have seldom used fax machine uh because when i started working we were using digital fax so i never asked to go down to the paper and dial the number and send it in the only time i used a fax machine was a couple of weeks ago when i had to fax something to to a government organization because they won't use anything other than a fax so that tells you how often i personally use fax machine uh moving along to the to the next slide phase 2 so phase 2 is probably the most important phase to get to that electronic workflow process so you need to so now think about where we were in phase 1 we were planning we were trying to implement it we were trying to assess what we have assess what we need to do now we actually doing it so you're you're starting to put some kind of electronic folders within the firm you you need to make sure that first of all you have some kind of a naming convention it's it's frankly it's no different than your 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 boxes that you have in the firm you have some form of convention whether you have it by client name you have it by file number client number the date the month whatever the convention that you use in the paper box you probably want the same in your electronic folders and that's so critical because going back to some of the things i was talking earlier in the slides that you want to be able to search it no different than you were searching on a research tool in some of the legal software that you used to search on case laws and and information that you need uh so that should be no different from say you know uh, making sure your files are structured electronically correctly so no matter who it is within the firm is able to search it knowing exactly what they need to search for in terms of name in terms of date in terms of client names folder names look there's no there's no common naming convention that works for everybody uh now that's good but that's also a challenge because if you've got 10 people in the law firm chances are 10 people may have a view on what the naming convention should be so somebody needs to make that decision uh whether it's the managing partner whether it's the office manager and you set set the rules out that this is what the naming convention is going to be very critical i cannot overemphasize that because a frustration will build up pretty quickly if you don't have people filing things in 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 a uniform manner in an organized manner in a structured manner the other thing is encourage people to keep digital notes so for example you know no matter what platform you're using you know instead of creating those 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 sticky notes and 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 putting it on people's computers or people's keyboards or sometimes on people's chair so they don't miss it uh start start to share this electronically so there are lots of collaborative software that you can send instant messages almost like whatsapp but lot more secure because it's within your phone so so get in the habit of doing those digital notes uh rather than rather than trying to right stay those sticky notes again saving money saving cost but also there's an electronic record of what you've been asking each other to do how many times you get to somebody and they say yeah i didn't see your sticky note or i lost your sticky note or i lost that paper if it's all digitalized pretty hard to say that you lost it because it's there uh the other one is you know it's a, uh, in terms of uh, security and in terms of we talked about read and write you want to encourage people to create pdfs as much as possible and the reason for that is if you have word documents or if you have uh, uh documents in 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 easily editable format then people can change the documents if they have the right level of access but the problem with that is you will have version control issues so you need to determine at what point each of these documents become a pdf and a searchable pdf the other one is export emails so i think at some point we're going to look at how cosmox can help with this exporting emails where your emails 
So let's say if you're using Office 365 or you're using a Google Mail uh, and one of these, one of these cloud-based platform, they can in sync with your practice management tool. That's great because then, you know, those two way in syncs are pretty good because then you have only one place to look for your emails rather than two different places. Uh, cloud storage, excellent point. If you're, if you're going to go paperless, make sure you assess your cloud storage options. Uh, make sure you understand whether Dropbox is good for you. Make sure you assess whether OneDrive is good for you. So having a good, good assessment of that and, and using the right level of cloud storage is pretty important. The other thing is backup, backup, backup. Now, when you have paper boxes, I don't know how you people back it up because that's your box. If it gets lost or if there's a fire in the worst case situation or there's a flood, then, then that paper is gone. I don't know how you back it up. However, with electronic storage, the, in most, most of the cloud-based platform, the backup is automatic and, and not to start getting too technical, but a lot of these backups happen in servers across across the country or in some case across the world. So the backup is, is in multiple locations and multiple storage. So chances are you can lose your files electronically. Uh, moving on to the next slide, let's go to phase uh, three. So phase three, uh, so now you've got your physical workflow and your digital workflow growing. So what do you do? Make sure you send the ground rule first. What do I mean by that? Any paper that comes within the office, uh, you almost have to police the process where it gets scanned. Almost, almost an instantaneous uh, uh, behavior, going back to change behavior, that people need to start scanning the document before it even gets, before it gets filed. If you still want to file it at some point or for something, make sure it's scanned for it. Um, what do you need to do after you scan it? Let's go back to our electronic. Uh, uh, on, on the previous side, we talked about making sure it's filed, it has the right naming convention, gets, gets, gets properly, properly saved on the right folder. So that's, that's the other aspect of it. Scan it, make sure it's filed properly. So no matter who it is within the firm, if they have appropriate level of access, they can go and view that document, documents that came in today. So that's the first and the most important thing. Get relevant applications. These days, you can get lots of different apps on your phone, on your, on, your, on your computer, on your tablets. Make sure you do an assessment, going back to our software and equipment point. Make sure you get the right guide apps to help you with the process. Do document upload notification. Now, I don't know how many of you are aware, but uh, you could actually make sure that the, the, there's proper notification in your, in your, in your cloud-based platform so every time a document is get uploaded, all the right people gets notified. So for example, you ordered some papers for discovery and, and a whole bunch of documents have arrived and there's three people working on that particular case. Then the office manager can scan all the documents and notify those three people that here are all the discovery documents and there you go. And they are stored in this folder. So please go get them. So guess what? All three of them can access the document if there are three people on the case at any point in time, no matter where they are, whether you're in the office or they're out of the office. Those of you who like to work when you're on vacation, you can, you, can, you can be in your vacation and still figure out what those documents are instead of spending hours and, and time figuring out what was there, what's not there. Each one of you can scan individually and make your own uh, determination if you need more or less and, and collaborate, going back to the point of collaboration. So, uh, document upload notification this next one is archive the documents very critical uh, just just like just like when when your office gets loaded with papers and boxes you try to send it off site to archive those documents because chances are no one's going to ask for it same thing you can do the same thing with the cloud storage after the matter is closed you can archive the documents not not only it's good from a from a security standpoint but more importantly it's actually good to make sure that no changes are made to those files once the matter is closed. So if you archive the documents, you pretty much restrict anybody adding any new documents, you restrict anybody changing the documents, you, you, restrict, you restrict the entire file folder, assuming you've, you've sealed the file. Imagine on the paper world, you've sealed the file, you've closed it, nobody can put anything further on it. So, so from a process standpoint, that gives you restriction. Now, in, in, when the matters are closed, when you archive, in most most uh, most situations, there's high level of uh, authentication and and a lot of approvals required before you can unarchive the file. 
because from a risk management standpoint, you don't want anybody to be just able to unarchive a document and either make edits or throw in documents that were not there when the matter was closed. So from a security standpoint, that's the other thing to keep in mind. Now, that takes us to the last point uh, in, in, in phase three. That sounds easy, right? So I'm gonna take that and pass it on to, uh, pass it on to Erica. Thanks, Moyar. I think that this is actually a great topic um, to talk about today. And a few points I do wanna highlight is <clears throat> when you're talking about the tools and technology that you use or your workflows or your processes, he's absolutely correct in that every firm is a little bit different as to what is the most important. And I think when we think of a paperless office, we think first of documents. And that was a, a strong theme through the topic today because that's usually what people think of. But when you look at your processes and your workflows, like was stated in that, that phase one, you also should think of things like your docketing. Are you docketing on a piece of paper? Um, your calendar, is that written? Your accounting records, your task tracking, is everything on a physical sheet of paper? The same rules apply. Um, you don't have effective backups of that information. You can't access it from wherever you are. You may lose track of your docketing because when you're outside the office, it's not being tracked properly. So it's important to think of all the different areas and functions of your firm and where the biggest issues uh, arise. So what I figured I'd do is just give a little bit of an example as to what paperless means. Um, you all may be using a variety of different applications for all of these different types of functions. So it's useful to see what's um, accessible, what's there, but at the end of the day, it's about the tool that makes most sense for you in regards to what you need to access and um, maybe even the, the different users in your firm as well. So I'm going to jump into Cosmux to give a bit of an example. For those who are not familiar, Cosmux is a completely uh, cloud-based legal practice management tool. So we will be focusing strongly on the, the practice management component, which is a lot of those daily activities. So let me go ahead and log in. Okay. so. Right now, now this tool is legal specific, of course, so I'm dealing with all of my particular matters. Pull my mouse over here. I could see all of my different files that I am working on. So obviously, because this is a cloud application, you are able to uh, use a mobile app, uh, access on your tablet, your computer, your Mac, your PC. That freedom is there. I actually talked to um, a law firm just today who is very a very frustrated Mac user uh, because they can't access everything, even on their Mac. Um, there are some obstacles there as well. So it's important to find the technology that fits the preferences of your firm and your staff as well. So if I go within a particular file, I'll double click and here you can see all of the different information. So when I stated that's not just about documents, this is what I mean. Everything here is information that could potentially have been on a piece of paper instead. You have your dockets here. Uh, if I go under my billing, I have my dockets and my disbursements listed here. I have all of my invoices. I have the records of all of my payments and my trust activity. And I'm sure there are many of you who are still using, you know, written ledgers or paper dockets. And it's about that um, being open to change, being open to newer technology, because as Mayor was saying, there's a benefit to efficiency, also a benefit to accuracy, ensuring that that information is captured and not dropped. Um, but also it's a service to your client. There's a few things that I'll mention, one of which being the client portal, that is an added value to your client in terms of the service that you provide. So this is internally. I'm looking at Jim's file here, uh, his divorce file specifically, and I can see everything. I can see the communication, meaning the emails that we've had back and forth. I can see the events that are either upcoming or ones that have taken place in the past. The tasks that I've worked on in his case. The documents, this is primarily, like I said, what most of you think of when you go to paperless. You can have document storage in uh, all different types of applications. There are many applications out there, some legal specific, some not. Uh, one uh, thing you do wanna be aware of is 
your space needs, you know, how much space you actually need in those tools, ensuring that they have the um, security and the backup that you desire for your type of information. And also, at least in the case with Cosmolex, there's an additional add-on, which is that client portal. So a client portal is actually the epitome of paperless, but it's involving your client. So instead of you, well, in addition to, I should say, you having everything paperless, what about your client having everything paperless? What if they can log in to a site and see everything you shared with them and they can download it if they need to, but they can also view it all directly there. So what a client portal means for both the law firm and the user, let's say I'm your client, um, I was invited to the portal, and by the way, in terms of security, client portal right here, and portals are not brand new, they've been around for several years now, but it's more of a cloud technology function. So if you're not using cloud tools, you might not be familiar with it. This is a way to choose, do I wanna invite this person to a portal, do I not? And if I do, what do I want to share with them? So like Mayo was stating, the security levels of these types of applications, especially cloud-based, which is what paperless is all about, have very granular permissions. So I could say, do I want to share invoices with this person, notes, documents, events, tasks? I decide. And then with each item, I need to designate whether or not that's going to be shared with my client. So very secure, um, very nothing's automatic. We don't blanket share a whole bunch of things. And you never want to be in that position because you may accidentally share something with your client you don't want to. So you want it to be very intentional as to what gets shared. But in terms of your client experience, I could be your client. I go to your website. I click on a button that says log in and I log into my portal. And this is what I would see. I would see a page here uh, with the logo at the top left. If I have multiple uh, files with you or matters, they'd be listed here. And I can look through all of these different tabs on the left if you've allowed me to. So it's based on permissions. So I can see my invoices. I can download. I can view them. I can even pay online. We work with LawPay for that. So you can, uh, your client can actually click on, a, um, on an invoice, click pay, pay online, and that information comes right back into your system. So great convenience for you, but also your client. All of the events and appointments they have upcoming. You know how many times you have to remind your client of you need to be in court in this date or you need to be in my office on that date. Why not they have their own personal calendar between you and them exactly what needs to happen so that they make sure that they are where they need to be. Tasks that the firm is working on, documents, as I mentioned, that you can share. Now, the beauty of it is not only can you share with them, they can share with you. So again, think of your client. Think of your, um, and every client might be different as to how tech savvy they are. There are some who would love to have a website and upload and they can do that. They can come here, they can upload a document to you. You get an email that says you have this document and it's gonna show up in your system under documents, under client portal documents. So you can easily see what your client has shared with you. Maybe they needed to sign something or you need some sort of personal document, not a problem. So that's a, a great example of how paperless is not just valuable for your firm, but valuable to your clients. Um, they will look at you know firm A versus firm B and maybe decide, you know what, I really like the ele electronic communication that I can do with my law firm. That's very valuable to me. I'm gonna choose to go there. It's a competitive advantage. So think of it that way as well. But also you always have your data accessible. Um, in this case, what I, what I say to law firms that are, very paper oriented and just love having that file folder per client, I tell them this is your electronic file folder. Just think of this as the tab on that little folder that says Jim Fields and his divorce case, and this is all the data within it. Same idea, it's just instead of physical, it's electronic. Now you can keep physical backups of whatever you want, but this should be your primary um, area for maintaining your information because, as Mayor was mentioning, you want to be able to access it wherever you are. Uh, I hear firms all the time that say they still print out or handwrite their calendar or their gender, what's going on for that day. Today, that's out of date in five minutes. You left the office and already something has happened where um, a, a time has shifted, something got canceled, and that piece of paper is no longer accurate. Um, same thing with 
even contact information or who you need to reach out to or where you need to be. Those things can change dynamically throughout the day. So you want to make sure that you are able to view this information quickly and easily. Uh, most notably is a mobile app. So for example, with Cosmlex, you can access your events, your dockets, even your documents. If you need to view them on your phone, you're, you can. So it just gives you that additional flexibility. And you just need to decide of the functions you do in the law firm, what is most important? And in that planning phase and in that implementation phase, where to start? Um, I know that some firms start with their new files, perhaps, you know, I, especially when it comes to documents. I'm gonna start going paperless with my new files and my old files I'll archive as I go. You know, nothing has to be done on day one, like we said, nothing gets done in a day. But think of the tools that you use, think of the technology that you use, um, what is on paper and how to get at least a copy, if not the, the whole piece of paper, electronic. All right, so that gives a nice little view of what technology can do to help your practice. And we do have um, a handout giveaway for you guys as well. Thank you so much, Mayor. Thank you, Erica. We do have a uh, giveaway for today's attendees, the Lawyer's Guide to Creating a Paperless Law Office. That is available in the handout section of the GoToWebinar panel uh, now. We want to go ahead and thank everyone for attending today's Cosmos Webinar Series presentation. We hope that it's educational for you and your law practice.